Hopefully they do it somehow. So right now, oh, I'm on. You got three. All right, welcome tonight to the Lewis Cass School Board of Education uh, meeting and public hearing we're having tonight. Uh, before we get started and set uh, the agenda going forward here, I wanted to kind of give you guys some guidelines and some uh, direction of what may, what may be happening tonight. But before that, I want everybody to be aware this is our first ever both live in person and live stream meeting. So apologies ahead of time if we have any uh, issues that arise again it's our first time so please be patient with us and given these presentations I remember my ninth school speech teacher said look out to the audience and you know imagine everybody in their underwear with us live streaming tonight that actually might be the case for some of our people at home so uh, hopefully we do okay and we will get started here so I'll call the meeting to order everybody's present and we'll stand with the pledge <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So first, if you're here at the public presentation, please silence your cell phone so it's not a distraction during the meeting. Um, also, during this meeting, there will be a lot of information shared, um, both from a legal perspective, financial perspective, among um, what the project is actually about. But we ask that you, in advance, um, hold any questions until the end. There will be a chance for everybody to ask questions at the end of the uh, hearing. You could change the slide. So there will be two ways that questions will be answered. Uh, during this public hearing. First of all, uh, for those in person, if you do have a question, feel free to go to the back where you came in. You can uh, sign your name, uh, put on some information what your question is, and we have some people here that are going to be reading off those questions for us. Um, if you're at home watching live stream through Wal Walton Webcasting, there will be an option here that you can see on our screen where you can go to our website, click on Bond 2020, this will bring you to the next screen here where you can see submit questions here. So you click that button. And then, Tim, if you kind of walk them through, there's forms there you have to fill out. Sure. And you take a look at it. Take a look at our website. You'll see the form here. Um, it's pretty simple. Follow the process through. And on that, um, you can see if, if you're can't get to our website. Um, for some reason, the, the JOT form is there, but uh, we do have everything all set up for that. So, 
go ahead and take us back. There you go. Uh, we just ask that you submit all your questions by 6.50 p.m. so we can try and get everybody in and get all the questions answered as, uh, as we possibly can. And if we go over 6.50, then we go over 6.50, but we want to try to answer everything that we can. So one thing we do ask is that the questions, at least for the hearing tonight, uh, relate to our project. There may be a lot of questions about, you know, what the school is going to be doing this fall, um, uh, what specific athletics might be doing even yet this summer, but this hearing tonight is specifically for project-related questions. So um, if you do submit a question and you don't see your question pop up on, uh, on the speakers here, that's probably because it wasn't project-related, and we will still respond to those, but it won't be at the hearing tonight. It'll be separate from that. All right. Now, as we open this preliminary determination hearing, I'm going to introduce Kristen from Ice Miller to kind of lay out the groundwork, at least uh, what got us here. Good evening, my name is Kristen McClellan. I'm a lawyer with Ice Miller in Indianapolis. Pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-20-3.5, a school corporation is required to hold two public hearings and adopt a resolution to preliminarily determine to issue bonds or enter into a lease for a project that has a total project cost in excess of a non-controlled project. The notice of this hearing was published just as legally required on May 22nd in the Pharaoh's Tribune. These public hearings in the adopt these public hearings in the adoption of res of the legal process. These resolutions establish the maximum financial terms for the proposed project that you'll hear about tonight. For the proposed project that you'll hear about tonight. Also, as an additional, additional note tonight, um, pursuant to executive order, as supplemented by several additional executive orders, as supplement, the governor of the state of Indiana declared a public health, governor of the state of Indiana declared a public health emergency, and in, further by executive order 2009, further by executive order 20, 2020, and extended multiple times since then, 20, and extended multiple times since then, the governor has such as this school board for meetings deemed essential may meet by video com conference or telephone conferencing so long as a quorum of the members participate and any meeting is made available to members of the public and the media. The board, has the board has determined that the need for safe and efficient facilities is an essential matter which is critical to the operations of your school and therefore tonight we'll hold a meeting both in par person and as televised. Yeah, so we wanted to make sure there was every opportunity for the community to be aware of what's going on. And so we, we feel we're going over and above by allowing this public avenue for people to speak as well as the live stream uh, questions as well. So now we'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Garland to talk about the process um, that we're taking from here. Sure. Basically, we're taking this from an educational need standpoint, and we're still working with our safety uh, that, uh, as, as a board myself, have put a lot of priority in it to be safety and education and trying to make sure our kids are well prepared, not just for 2020 or 2021, but looking at what our kindergartners will see as they start to graduate in 12, 13 years. So as we take a look, we're trying to introduce more and more STEM ideas into the classrooms and to our schools. Uh, we also have a large robotics program. Uh, we're also taking a look at special ed. When we broke away from La Jesse, our special ed has grown. At the same time, we have higher needs uh, for our special ed, and they require more classrooms, things like that. We have to make sure that we are offering programs to make sure we're staying competitive with other schools and uh, ensuring our, kid, our kids have the best education that we can. So you'll see that we'll be adding classrooms and taking a look at some other areas. And uh, we have seen a slight increase in student, which is a great in student uh, ADM count, uh, average daily membership. And uh, that's a good problem to have. Uh, with special ed, they may be high, high needs or whatever the case may be, but that's a great problem to have. Looking at STEM and robotics and other programs we need to add in to make sure our kids are competitive when they go to college and in the workforce, that's a great problem to have. So we're taking a look at that. And we have the other things other than education. You have to make sure your facilities are functional. Uh, our, our roof is over 20 years old at the high school. 
Uh, so we have to replace the roof. Looking at our HVAC system, our heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems of both the elementary and the high school, they're outdated and needed to be upgraded. So we have a lot of things like that that people won't even see where we're spending $4.95 million on. But, uh, but I know that uh, myself and the board want to continue to upgrade our facilities to make sure it's safe, it's adequate, uh, the highest educational needs that we can have for our students and meeting uh, the needs for our special ed kids as well. So really that's the basis of our project. And uh, we, Matt and I are gonna go through shortly here and, and show you the exact details, well, as where we're at anyway, <laughs> detail-wise, so, Matt? Yeah, before we get started on the uh, specific projects that we're looking at as far as this bond, I would like to introduce um, our project team that's been involved at least at this point um, in coming up with a lot of these conceptual designs. So uh, before we get into those projects, I'll introduce first uh, Kelly Good from KJG. We're located in West Lafayette. We're an interior design, architecture, and engineering firm. Um, and we're here to help Lewis Cass School System um, understand what their architecture and engineering needs are. And I'll turn it over to Tim Balancefer. Good evening, Tim Balancefer with T-Bird Design, Engineering, and Surveying in Lafayette, Indiana. I'm the president of the company. I've been in business for 20 years. Um, we've been involved with several school corporations throughout the state and uh, here to help if, if there's any questions. Thank you, guys. Um, you may ask how we came down to this selection. Actually, this exact board um, wasn't sitting here too long ago for our last bond issue uh, where we were looking at the safety and logistics of our facilities. And uh, we had interviewed several engineering and architecture firms at the time. Um, this group actually came recommended from a diff few different school corporations. They've recently worked a lot with uh, Tippecanoe County School Corporation, which includes all the Tippecanoe County schools, not just uh, Lafayette Jeff, the large one. But uh, they've done a lot of these athletics facilities, done a lot of these upgrades to schools, done a lot of the uh, improvements for special needs and uh, technology advancements. So that's why we selected them. So to get into the actual projects themselves, uh, as we start to pull those slides up. What's that? Talk about future meetings. Is that oh, what? yes, sorry. Can't see that very well from this angle. <laughs> so yeah, this is the first of four meetings that we plan on having. Um, it only requires actually two hearings, one tonight and one on the 10th, but we felt um, with everything going on, we wanna be overly communicative through this time. So uh, we've set four meetings, uh, tonight being the first. We will have one tomorrow as well uh, as an informational meeting uh, just like this that will be here and live stream. Um, we also have one scheduled for the 9th and then the final one on the 10th, which is the actual uh, public hearing is a uh, public meeting for the approval and advancement of this project. So uh, if for some reason after tomorrow night's meeting, we don't get a lot of attendance or any more questions, we may uh, hold off on doing the 9th just to respect people's times uh, that are committing to being here all through all these, so. Yeah. Uh, all the meetings start at six o'clock and they're here at the high school auditorium. So for our actual bond presentation, these guys have already introduced themselves. Um, <clears throat> before we dig into these, and I'm gonna stand up for this because I can't see at this yeah. angle, but uh, before we get into these specifically, I, I do wanna point out that a lot of the stuff we're gonna talk about tonight are just conceptual. I've already had several questions. Is this exactly what it's gonna look like? Absolutely not. Um, we were, we've seen some uh, drafts done by our administrators here, as well as our athletic director that have shown what they, their thoughts are. These were actually some conceptuals put together by architects and engineering firms that are involved with this. What it actually ends up looking like will likely be a lot different than this. Ultimately, big picture, we know these are the projects that need to get taken care of and we know we need the end result for our school corporation, um, and we'll communicate through this whole process with uh, all of our uh, constituents and our community on what's going on. But big picture here, uh, first of all, the history of our bonds. Here's some bonds that were done uh, back in 2009, 2014, fixing some roof and some uh, heating equipment. Our most recent, which it's crazy to me to believe that this was that long ago, 2017, we did all the upgrades uh, to the actual um, facilities here on campus, the classrooms, and uh, did the safety measure improvements as well as the athletics 
center back there. And Matt, while you're on this slide, the 2009 bond is at 6.5 million. That bond actually falls off or is paid off this December, which allows us to do such things like this as continuing bonds. So we don't put our board or our school corporation in such a debt. In such a debt. That really helps out, and that's how we monitor and, uh, and go through for our bonds. Yeah, and Baker Tilly will talk about that on how we balance our uh, tax rates later, uh, but this is an, an opportunity for us to continue on and make those improvements. So um, with this, we'll start with the uh, elementary school. Uh, we've got, well, big picture in the whole corporation, we want to look at some, uh, possibly purchasing some additional land uh, around the facilities here uh, to be able to allow us to do some of these changes we want to make logistically. We're hopeful we can uh, work with the community member in securing that land. We also, for safety reasons, want to enclose the ditch on the east side of the elementary school. Um, we know that there's some backup generation needed at the administrative office just for concurrency of systems. Uh, at the elementary school, we, we're looking at updating the restrooms, adding water fountains, again adding a generator there, uh, doing upgrades to the gym, the HVAC system. We'll see a lot of that um, across the corporation, HVAC. It's not pretty like Tim mentioned earlier, but it's needed um, to create some energy efficiency in, in our buildings um, and just upgrades of 30, 40 year old systems. Uh, also at the elementary school, we want to literally improve the curb appeal by uh, replacing or repairing some curbs around campus there, uh, adding additional classrooms, uh, which we'll see later, This the layout. We need to update and add square footage to the elementary cafeteria. It's really tight and congested in there, so we need to add some square footage to that. And then, just like as you can imagine, with all this e-learning recently, continue to invest in technology and upgrades in our equipment there. And Matt, that's, uh, as we go through and take a look at these, uh, as a board, we have put these in priority order, so to speak, um, as we come through, because maybe bids are higher in certain areas than others and require more money to be um, on such things as the uh, HVAC system. So we may have to pull back on some other things and do those later. But uh, that's what we just do through this process of taking bids in and looking at our drawings and things like that. So we know where we stand when it comes time to, to pay for these and, and bid these out where we, where we need to go. So. So here you can see some of those, um, at, such as enclosing the ditch, moving a, a playground area across to the other side of the ditch, maybe adding a bump out for new classrooms there. Again, this is just a conceptual, what the end result looks like is to be determined, as well as a new cafeteria addition there on the bottom side. We've got some blow-ups of these here, if we continue. So here's just a close-up of what that might look like if it were to look like our conceptuals there, add some additional storage and some uh, classrooms there to the east side of the elementary. Again, on this, Matt, one of the questions that somebody had emailed me earlier was, I didn't know we had a big influx of students. And as, mentioned, as I had mentioned earlier, no, we have not. But when it comes to creating new STEM programs, uh, our special ed and places uh, like that to increase our education, we do need to have more classrooms uh, to benefit our, benefit our kids uh, from educational standpoint. So that's the why we have we have to add more classrooms to four classrooms. Again, you can see here, uh, we may get this shift a little bit with some variances among other things, but this shows the addition to the cafeteria. Probably want to look exactly like that, but look very similar to that. Punch out of the wall, adding to the cafeteria there. Obviously modernizing that whole area when we do the upgrade. Uh, as you can see, the much larger list is here at the high school. Um, we've got a lot of things we need to look at, a lot of systems that have been uh, in place for quite some time. And uh, th again, these are just big picture items. These are prioritized, but there's some big dollar amount items on there. But even here, you know, in our auditorium, upgrading the stage curtains. Um, some, I already received a couple questions. What about things that may not be on your list from our earlier presentation? The school still has a maintenance budget that they plan on upgrading other areas as well. So if you don't see your item on here, it still may be on the list of things that's getting upgraded, but just not with bond proceeds. Uh, but upgrading the auditorium stage curtains, at, uh, replacing the HVAC systems, again, a big dollar item that uh, just sits on a roof for the most part and won't see the uh, benefit from except for our energy bills. Electronic signage out front, uh, replacing the roof, Upgrades to the football stadium, that structure is quite in poor shape, so it needs to be upgraded. Uh, some updates to our sports complex. We 
We know we want to add additional fields for baseball and softball. Again, how this exactly looks is to be determined, but we know we need to add some as we continue to bring junior high sports back into our corporation. Um, new maintenance building uh, to handle buses and our equipment on site. New water fountains replacing exhaust fans uh, throughout the building. Building new bus parking areas to get them out of our main lot. Again, technology upgrades and equipment there. Um, replacing curbs around this campus as well. Additional classrooms here for the junior and senior high school. Uh, again, addressing some of those robotics, STEM, and special education needs through our corporation. Um, new windows, a lot of our windows are uh, original. Yeah. Original and <laughs> not very energy efficient. Not that windows are in general, but uh, definitely not. Uh, new high school lockers throughout, um, tennis court resurfacing, and then potential asphalt runner to get people from our uh, west side of the entry to the back. Now, here's some pictures of some of that older equipment. Tim, if you kind of want to highlight some of these pictures, I know. Sure, you take a look at the elementary roof on the lower left. Um, that's where we're holding water on the roof, and that's within our HVAC systems. Again, HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Our units are 20 years old in most cases. Uh, they're not efficient. Um, they're in high need of repair. We have spent approximately $600,000 in the last five years just repairing the elementary and high school. So over time, it will help pay for itself by getting new equipment in instead of just doing repairs all the time. Electrical panels, outdated, need to be updated. You can just see the difference in the pictures. And this is just a few. Uh, we can go on and on with pictures to show you how bad they are or they need to be updated. So here's an example of the classroom additions. This right now, again, conceptual, but this shows, uh, I don't know if you saw it earlier, but this is actually on the south side of the building in that little alcove uh, near the greenhouse there. One of the questions that uh, was brought up to me is, uh, what about the greenhouse? We're just going to move the greenhouse over. We don't show it currently, but we will just move it over and, and place it where the classrooms are. Again, it's conceptual. We may move the classroom somewhere else, uh, up just a location we're suggesting at this point. Uh, this is definitely a real big picture here. There, we know that the stadium uh, is deteriorating, and we need to do some upgrades there because we cannot have our people sitting on bleachers that are uh, held up by some pretty poor structure. So we know we got to do some changes there. We've looked at actually three different options with our team, our design team, um, and actually options that aren't even on the screen. So uh, I won't dig too much into it, but ultimately at the end of the day, we're looking at new lockers, uh, new stadium, new seating, um, new entry out there to kind of bring us up with uh, the Joneses, as you would say. You see that asphalt runner that goes around as well, and then the tennis court resurfacing. Again, this is uh, the early conceptions of new locker rooms here on the screen. There's been other ideas shared as well, uh, but again, making it more modern, making it more uh, friendly as we get visitors in here instead of looking at a 1960s, 70s, early 80s structures, uh, we're, we're showing that investment by upgrading all of our entrances and our locker rooms and concessions. I'm clicking. There we go. So this, uh, you saw the big picture there that I've all, got a lot of questions on this. Again, uh, I, I keep repeating this, but this is just too early for us to talk exactly what this is going to look like. Uh, this is, was just the original general layout provided by our design team uh, that's familiar with our facilities for sure. But um, we, we've talked about a few different ideas on this. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we have uh, additional fields to handle our baseball and softball needs, maintaining our band access as well. So here, this shows general uh, maintenance building for our maintenance team, uh, not just for bus servicing, but also for other equipment needs, lawn mowers, tractors, so forth, that needs to be maintained and serviced throughout the year. So overall, big picture, this kind of wraps it all up showing all the different areas we'll be touching um, in different ways. And the next, really, next six months, that's gonna be really honed in on. We're hoping that uh, we can start this construction really early in 2021. So we've, our design team definitely has their work cut out for them here in the next few months to get this narrowed in 
and again, we'll definitely keep the community abreast of any changes and, and decisions that are made along the way. But this hearing tonight was just to let you know what the, what the projects we're considering and the cost of those projects. We are by far uh, close to the end. We're uh, step one of maybe 100, I think, as Ryan says. So just really early here, trying to communicate as much as we can. And then from here, we'll roll into the tax impacts and that we this should. has, of which I'll pass that over to our friends at Baker right. Tilly. And Brock um, is from Baker Tilly. At this time, they are unable to attend meetings live, uh, part of their corporation policy. But we do have him online, I believe. <laughs> and They're here. <laughs> and trying to bring him in. So this time, Brock, are you there? I'm here, thank you very much. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Can, you, can everybody hear me okay? Hopefully so, I'm not getting any, any sound on my end. If you are, if you can't hear me okay, my name is Brock Bauscher with Baker Tilly. We serve as financial advisor to Lewis Cass Schools and, and certainly honored to be here uh, talking about the financial aspects of this project. As uh, we get into some of the details regarding the preliminary impact with the assumed impact of Everybody, okay, great. I think everybody can hear me now. Um, so I'll, I'll restart just for the sake of everyone. Again, my name is Brock Bauscher with uh, the firm Baker Tilly. Honored to be here this evening. Uh, talk about some of the details regarding the financial impact of this project. So starting off with this first slide, uh, borrowing amount of $15.6 million for the proposed project. The repayment term that we have been discussing is a 15 year, three month uh, repayment structure and the maximum repayment structure in the state of Indiana is 20 years. So this board has, has uh, given us the direction to build it in a, in a capacity where we pay back the bonds as quickly as we can. However, balancing that impact to the taxpayers on an annual basis. So really trying to balance between between the total interest expense and not overburdening taxpayers on an annual basis. Based upon what the interest rates we're seeing in the market from recent bond issues, we're assuming that the total interest expense would be somewhere approximately 6.2 to $6.3 million. And that's based upon today's interest rates plus 100 basis point to be uh, conservative and 100 basis points as uh, this board is aware equals 1%. So again, assuming that the interest rates range from somewhere between two and a half to about 4.2%. That translates to a maximum annual lease rental payment of no more than $2.38 million. And as uh, we'll look in the next slide of what that would mean to taxpayers that $2.38 million would not be felt until existing bonds are paid off after 2030 when, again, exist, all existing debt matures. Project maximum tax rate impact is 0.5456 or approximately half a dollar per $100 of assessed value. However, as Dr. Garland pointed out earlier in the presentation, 2020 and 2021 really present a unique opportunity for Lewis Cass Schools to, to fit in this debt issuance as the 2009 bond issues mature. So that incremental impact or what taxpayers may actually feel would only be an increase of 0.1593 per $100 of assessed value. So based upon our estimates, we assume that the dollars available for construction would be about $15.169 million. Then as, as you all see here on this next slide of what actually means to taxpayers, if we look at the homestead value and in state of Indiana, the homestead value or the gross assessed value 
or what some may refer to as market value, does not equal what the taxable property value is. So if we look at the value we've identified as the median home value of $94,800 based upon data available from the uh, United States Census Bureau, so approximately a $95,000 home, which is the median value, the taxable property value with assuming that homeowner has applied for and is receiving the standard $45,000 homestead deduction, the supplemental 35% homestead deduction, and a $3,000 mortgage deduction, the actual taxable property value is $29,370 for that average taxpayer. So that incremental increase that you saw on the prior slide of an estimated impact of 0.1593 would result or translate to an annual increase to that average taxpayer for a homeowner of $46.79. I'm going to now move down to the per acre of ag land. In 2021, so next year's taxes, the, the base acre amount decreases to $1,280 per acre as the taxable value. So that incremental tax rate increase of 0.1593 would be a per acre impact of approximately $2. So that is a, would be, would increase by the number of acres that uh, property owner owned. So if somebody owned 10 acres, you could take that $2, multiply it by 10, and get the $20 per year impact. Then lastly, the $100,000 of commercial and rental property, you can see what that increase would be to that uh, property owner as well of, of approximately $159 per year. Now jumping to this last slide, just to give a basis of comparison, just to show how Lewis Cass compares to their peers, and these are all 2020 tax rates. So the total tax rate for Lewis Cass is uh, approximately 98 cents per $100 of assessed value. So in looking at nearby school districts and how this uh, school district compares to peers, you can see that uh, right there in the middle compared to where most other schools currently are for the 2020 taxes. And by, even by adding a, approximately 15 cents to the tax rate, still very close to the average in the state of Indiana based upon the 2019 tax rates. That's, that's the most recent statewide data we have at this point. Uh, but the statewide average was $1.08. So even with a potential increase of 15 cents, very close to that statewide average. So happy to uh, field questions as, as they come up related to the finances. Did you want to talk on this? Yeah, I thought, am I up? Okay. Yeah, so again, just summarizing what was said there by uh, Brock. Uh, the other day, we're looking at the average homeowner, $100,000 home, it's about a $47 increase. And then uh, us against our other school corporations, uh, we, that's kind of why we set this priority list, because we know, we know. as far as tax-wise, we, we, we can't get everything we want. We know we have to pri prioritize our projects, and we kind of defined where our school board wanted to stay competitive on tax rate, because we don't want people considering you know, shifts out of our corporation because of tax rates. But in the same regard, we have to be able to upgrade our facilities to be able to continue to compete uh, with other schools because since they broke those borders, that's realistic what we're in right now. So continuing to invest in those areas. I am sorry, I'm hitting the wrong button here. One thing, one, one thing I wanted to mention. Am I on? There we go. Uh, again, annual. So this would be paid annually just to make sure everybody understood. It's annual, not, not two payments a year. So. And our responsibility as a school corporation is also to speak worst case scenario. So uh, he mentioned that that's with a 1% increase on what our current rates are. Um, what we're seeing right now, uh, I, I'm no economist by any means, but we're hopeful that we can stay within the, or well under that 1% increase with less of a tax impact. All right, so where do we go from here? Um, this kind of gives the 
timeline of what it looks like from here through uh, the end of project completion. Our, our goal is to, within the next six months, as I mentioned, really finalize all of our plans with our architect and engineering partners. Uh, we will be holding these meetings, like we already mentioned, this week and next. Uh, we will have uh, future public hearings and uh, to actually obtain bond proceeds both in October and then this really gives us the flexibility. That's another thing we wanted to do as a board is to get this stuff done ahead, as, ahead of time as possible because it gives us some flexibility between September and January to buy bonds on the best interest rate possible. Uh, we don't want any corporate or any unnecessary corporate funds going toward interest when we could either use them toward construction or uh, be able to reduce the tax rate. So we've got that flexibility to actually sell bonds between those time frames, and then uh, here this winter, uh, whether that be December or early January, our hope is to start on our projects. Depending on bond sales, if we can sell it prior to the December, we will, and if it's not, uh, not till January 1st, and we'll start the actual improvements after January 1st, after we sell bonds. So obviously there's gonna be a lot of questions on how this all can happen timing-wise, and a lot of that really depends on what the final design is. Um, we're not gonna disrupt our sports seasons to be able to pull off some of these things. So uh, with the athletics mainly, it's really gonna be uh, being very tricky and strategic, I guess, uh, with how that schedule lays out to where we can have a minimal disruption to our uh, existing and current schedules. So with that, word to questions. And we have Greg Crozier here who will be reading off the questions as we have them come in. But I think first we're going to take questions from the audience before we come and take online comments that were posted. So do we have any questions um, that anybody would like to ask? We have two mics in the back. If you're unable to get up or, or walk to the uh, mics in the back, just raise your hand and we'll have a mic brought to you. Anybody need I can't hardly, the lights are right in my eyes. <laughs> Do you have a question? Can you guys, you got a mic, we can get him real quick. Don, thank you. We're gonna put you on a mic, Mitch, just so that we can, everybody can hear you. <laughs> put you on the spot. You don't need it, but live stream might. No, I just want about the baseball field, the one that's there now and the softball, it's gonna be pretty much in the same areas the way it looks, so as a taxpayer, I. I'm all for bringing up to school, don't get me wrong. But I like to spend my money wisely, and to me, that's not very wisely. So that's all I, I that's my main concern. I mean, you gotta take down the lights, you gotta ruin this and that. It's a waste of money, my opinion. Well, again, I, I appreciate the question, but I, I do want you to know that this is just conceptual. Again, uh, when we gave them the uh, I guess the launch of design, we said, act as if there are no barriers. What would you do if this was an open canvas? We know that our school corporation is an open canvas. There's things that we're gonna have to move and adjust, um, and we can't say what it's gonna look like yet, Mitch. We just know that we need four fields, and the conceptuals we have, we basically gave them an open canvas. Yeah, yep. And there are some underlying issues at the baseball field and softball field that we do want to address somehow. Again, we go to the bidding and it doesn't work out. We, we still need to address those issues and what that cost will be, we'll still be bringing to the public and let everybody know, but very good question. Yep. Any other questions in house? Can't hardly see. Seeing none, you wanna to go to the online questions? Sure. Okay, Greg. Okay, question one. Will the new football and baseball facility slash complex have a room for athletic taping, do injury checks, and hold some trainer supplies? Basically, will we have a training room available out in this? Something we haven't discussed. That's a great idea. But uh, it's a we great- We know we're gonna have facilities to handle you know, additional locker rooms and stuff. I'm sure we can integrate some of those things. It makes sense. Something We've done that in our new athletics areas, so. Okay, uh, the second question is a two-parter. It says, people on a budget generally budget for a uh, new roof, HVAC, et cetera. Has that not been done by our school corporation? Well, all of those items 
when you talk about roof and HVAC systems, those are such lar large cost items, they cannot be considered in a regular maintenance school board budget. They're just too big. Um, if you look at our annual operating budget for maintenance items, um, it's not $5 million. And that's likely what it would cost if we replaced all, replaced all of our roof systems. And so what we do include in our normal maintenance budgets are repairs of those systems. But we have to look at bond proceeds, and that's why this was done decades ago, well before any of us were sitting here, to use these bonds for things like that, um, to con continue to do large upgrades to facilities. Our regular board budgets are just for maintenance and repairs. Absolutely true. Okay, in the second part, it says, additionally, STEM education is extremely important. Have you looked at Ivy Tech and IUK as an opportunity for our students instead of adding classrooms for a diminished enrollment? Yes, we have looked at that. And a lot of our students do do that, but that was really at the higher levels, grades nine through 12. The STEM projects we wanna put in are in grades six through eight and pre-K through fifth grade. That's where some of the additions will be coming in as well. <coughs> and Ivy Tech and other colleges don't support them as much. Uh, we did get a grant from Purdue to help out in one of our STEM rooms at the elementary, which was huge. That's, it took up a full classroom to get that in there. So yes. all the questions we have. Well, we're gonna wait a few minutes in case there's any more. We'll give some time here. That awkward silence. <laughs> we're at 639. That's a great idea. Rick, you want to sing? No, you said? Me, you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, any comments from the board? Anything? Rick was offered to sing. Oh, Rick was going to sing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bates, have you seen anything else? I didn't bring my guitar. <laughs> are you seeing any other questions that will pop through or anything? All right, if there are no more questions, uh, again, we will be here tomorrow night to uh, answer any questions, give us a presentation again. Uh, if, if we do see a lot more response tomorrow night, we need to hold the 9th. We will hold the 9th, and of course our final hearing will be on the 10th for this, uh, where the final steps will be done to move this into process. So, uh, and Matt, no more questions, go ahead. And, and with that, I believe our form will be up all the way through, through uh, June the 10th. So if you happen to be thinking of a question and it comes up tomorrow, fill the form out and it will go into a file and we will read those off tomorrow night. The same thing uh, over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, even into Tuesday, you think of a question um, all the way through and we can uh, comment on those as well. So the form will be and stay open until we close the meeting on June the 10th. Oops. Okay, so with nothing else, we will close the public hearing and we'll move on to our regularly scheduled board meeting. If you just came for the public hearing, feel free to leave, you're welcome to stay. This is where we're uh, really, do we have anything left for the agenda for tonight? No, it's next Wednesday we get the regular board meeting, so. So yeah, you can take a vote to go ahead and close the regular All right, session. All right, we'll take a motion to close the meeting. So moved. All in favor? All right. All right. Thanks for coming, guys.